Hi, I'm Anne from Game Like a Mother. Today I'm going to show you how to play Dice Throne. It's ages eight and up, two to six players, although you should start at two players and then add more as you're more comfortable and familiar with the game. And it takes 20 minutes for a two player game. Let me show you how to play. These are the four characters that come in the big box Marvel edition of Dice Throne. And in this uh, tutorial, I'm going to show you the basics of selecting your character, how to do the game, the game setup, and basics of gameplay, but I'm not going to get into the intricacies of the different powers and abilities of each one of the characters. This is meant to just get you up and running with the basics of the game. Uh, so to begin, you look underneath these characters and you can see this card has something, you look for the complexity rating of the character. Thor is at a level three and Spider-Man is at a level two. And I highly recommend for your first time or two playing the game, starting with a lower uh, complexity character. They're still very powerful. You still can win against them. Uh, Loki and Scarlet Witch have higher complexity levels, but Spider-Man can be played against Loki and still win. So complexity is not related to power. It is how well you use their different abilities uh, when you're playing the game. So for this demonstration, we're going to start with Spider-Man and Thor playing against each other in a standard two-player game. The goal of the game is to reduce your opponent's health to zero, which in a two-player game, each player starts out with their health set to 50. Uh, you're going to get out the board that comes in your character's pack and you put on the side the sheet with all of their powers on it. It is important that you read through the different powers before you can begin the game uh, because it can matter for uh, placement at the beginning of the game. For example, Mjolnir begins on the game board. Uh, all of your attacks are listed out on the board. They There are some that are similar in some ways, but they have different uh, damage and bonuses associated with each one. For some of them, it's the number on the dice that will matter. And for others, it's the color or symbol that pops up that will determine what you're able to do for your attack. Uh, there are also either one or two spots, depending on the character, that show your defensive roles. These are what you use when someone else has uh, uh, created a certain type of attack against you. For uh, most of them, you're able to defend, and you have different dice rolls that you're able to do for that, and we'll cover that all here in a minute. And then you just set your combat points to two to start out the game. Uh, think of that as money. It doesn't matter if your money runs out, if your combat points go to zero during the game, you'll get more money or combat points as you continue to play. But it does matter if your health goes to zero. If it goes to zero, then you're out, it is over. Each player shuffles their deck that is unique to their character. Uh, you can tell whose deck it belongs to uh, because it has that, uh, that character um, on it. And uh, you shuffle out, you deal out four to yourself to begin the game. Each player rolls one die, and whoever gets the higher number gets to go first. So in this case, Thor got a four, and uh, he will get to begin the game. I highly recommend having the reference card that comes with each deck handy when you begin to play because it takes what feels like is a lot of information and makes it very checkmark friendly, easy to go through. Your general turn order your uh, for each time is you have your upkeep phase where you resolve any status effects that are on your board. After that, you have your income phase where you get to gain a combat point and draw a card. Then your main phase where you're doing whatever you would like to do with your cards. Then you have uh, your offensive role phase and you're resolving that and people get to uh, defend. Um, from whatever attack you've rolled. And then finally, you get to do more things with your cards at the end of the round, um, and you have a, a cap of six cards in your hand. To begin, the first player uh, skips. There, there is no upkeep phase to worry about here. Um, Thor could do something with Mjolnir if he really wanted to, but he's not going to. Uh, he does not get to do the income phase because he's first player, so he goes right to main phase in which he gets to choose what he's going to do with any of these cards. And there's a lot of different things you can do with the cards. You can uh, 
upgrade your attacks, which is really nice. You can do things to uh, affect the dice rolls. You can pay to make certain numbers appear and uh, you can um, remove status effects and they have colors around the outside that talk about that help you understand what they go with and what they're able to do. Um, a key thing is any that you sell uh, you get to or just discard and not use you gain one combat point for that So it doesn't matter what the number on it is on it some cost two combat points some cost zero to use if you discard a card and Don't use it you get an extra combat point. So to begin they're going to um, upgrade an attack because it's generally pretty nice to get to upgrade an attack. So from Odin Force to Ordin Force 2, and that costs two combat points. So this goes down to zero, and uh, he is going to not worry about status effects on another player. That's what this card does. So he's going to just discard it, and go up to one, and that's good enough for now and he's going to go ahead and roll. When you roll, uh, this game has been compared to Battle Yahtzee. If you kind of think about it like that, I think it helps. You roll your dice up to three times and you get to save uh, whatever uh, dice you want each time. So if they roll this, ooh, got some sixes. If you can roll a lot of sixes, you're going to do very well at this game. That's how you get the best attacks. Uh, so you can see there's a number and there's a symbol on here. Um, you can go for uh, straights, um, small and large straight, but there's a lot of good things with sixes. So we'll have him roll again, and we'll say he uh, stops at this point, and I'm going to change this to this over here, uh, because it matters that he's only rolled twice. He's going to declare his attack, which is uh, chain lightning. I'm reading this upside down. I'm pretty sure that's what it says. So it's chain lightning. And at this point, you pause, you declare your attack and say to the other person, would you like to, basically, would you like to do anything to mess with the dice that I've put out here and make it so I can't do my attack? And depending on the cards in this person's hand, they might want to, but they don't have anything that would help. But sometimes they have a thing where you can spend a combat point and change one of the dice to like to tip it. To one higher or one lower or something like that and they could mess up the attack that they're trying to do here but they're not going to they're going to say no that's fine proceed and it's key that it was only two rolls because if they had played the tippet card and changed this to like a, a uh, here they'd been able to change this to like a four or something so it's not one of the nice attacks here he would still be able to roll uh, the die another time because he still has his third roll available to him um, so just for basics, it's still at the same thing. There's three blues and two thunders here. So now, uh, Thor gets to roll three dice and he's going to deal damage. I'm going to come around here because there's a lot of text for me to read on this and I'm upside down. He's going to deal damage equal to the total roll value of any two of these dice. Additionally, deal two damage as an isolated source of collateral damage to a chosen opponent may be the same opponent. So there's a little bit to read there, but it isn't too bad. Um, he is going to roll, and at the same time, Spider-Man gets to choose between two different defensive rolls. One is just two dice, and that with that, if he rolls a six as one of those two dice, he's going to defend um, half of the damage. Um, and if he did both sixes, then he wouldn't get any damage. Or he can choose to roll three dice, and for any blue that comes up, he deals one damage to his opponent. So there's a couple different things coming on. Um, this guy, Thor, rolls three dice, chooses the two big ones to do nine damage. Um, and then he's going to pick another two damage to do. So that's a pretty nice attack. Um... So that's going to be 11 damage to him. And we'll say he went ahead and rolled three of um, blues, which would deal one damage back. So he goes down to, um, he only gets, yeah, yeah, he gets 11 damage. So he goes down to 39. And 
uh, Thor got three damage. So he's down to 47. Here, let's find seven and 40. Okay, there are different types of damage in this game and they have a chart to show you what kind of damage it is and uh, what it can do. Um, the chart is in page 10 of the rule book. There's defendable, avoidable, modifiable, uh, with special targeting rules for each of them. Uh, so there's, there's normal damage, undefendable damage, pure damage, and collateral damage. And that, for me, I've played the game a fair amount, and this is where I have to reference the rules the most. Because most of the time, it's normal damage, um, and you don't, you just roll your defensive dice and you don't have to worry about it. There are different intricacies to undefendable damage. The main thing, undefendable damage, you aren't defending with your dice. Um, but you can still use cards and status effects against it. Um, it's modifiable. So I'm not going to go into the, all the intricacies of those right now. Just be aware there are different types of damage and there are different types of things to do with that you do with the damage. There's actually five. There's also ultimate damage. Uh, so that's where you're going to have to reference the rule sheet the most in this game, in my experience. So now we have reached number seven on your turn order uh, info card, and we're back to main phase level two, where now they get to look at the cards again and see if there's one they want to sell. And the thing is, you can't do this while you're rolling the dice because sometimes you realize, oh, I actually would like to have another combat point so I can use one of these cards here, and it's too late once you've entered roll phase for that. You need to have sold card, dis uh, discarded cards, sell them for combat points earlier if that was the case. They don't have more than six cards. They're fine hanging out with these for now. So they're gonna just end their turn. So now we go to the next person's turn uh, Spider-Man, he doesn't have any upkeep phase to worry about. There aren't any tokens placed on the center of his board right now. Uh, the income phase, he gets uh, one more combat point and gets to draw a card. And now he's entered main phase. And there are some things that are just really great and happen sometimes. And this is free. It costs zero uh, combat points and he gets to gain two combat points. And it's an instant action because it's the red around it. So he, he could use that at any point. He could have used that when he got the card. But um, a lot of times we just wait until it's the main phase anyway because it, it makes things a little bit easier to keep track of. So he gets another two combat points for free just because he got the nice card. And uh, we're not going to have him uh, do anything else uh, right now because, uh, oh, he'll, you know what? We're going to have him gain his combo because that is uh, my favorite part of playing as Spider-Man is the combo, which because it basically gives you a second offensive roll phase. So you can do a lot of damage um, on one turn. So that costs three combat points. That's very expensive, but it's pretty worth it. So he gained this and he's going to be able to spend it during his turn after his offensive role play phase. There's a lot of info about it over here on the side. The other key thing about uh, your powers and abilities is the stack limit. The stack limit is for uh, the combos for Spider-Man is one. You can only have one of these on uh, your board at a time. And you have more than one of them because some of the other players have abilities to, that would allow them to take some of your effects. And so if you're playing against the Scarlet Witch, she might uh, snag this and use it for herself. I'm pretty sure it was Scarlet Witch who does that. Uh, same thing with Webbed. There, your stack limit is one and he has three but other players use them. Um, and for uh, Thor, these have uh, different stack limits and Mjolnir is just out there and uh, you can't destroy Mjolnir because it's Mjolnir. Uh, so we're saying that's it for the beginning of his turn. He's gonna go into his offensive roll phase. He rolls his dice and uh, 
he has six, five, and three. Um, he's going to try to go for the straight and oh, through the magic of me changing the dice for him, he gets the large straight on his second roll. He doesn't even have to use any cards for that. And uh, it's interesting, some of them, it's the same card that has the same spot on the board that has multiple attacks listed on it. Uh, for Thor, it is two separate spots because slightly different things happen depending. Uh, it just helps the more familiar with you are with these characters. That helps. So for the large straight, uh, he's declaring his attack and he's going to be able to draw one, deal eight damage, and then um, inflict webbed on another player. Uh, this player is given a chance to alter any of this dice. He's not able to. And so it's Thor's turn to roll um, the defensive dice. He rolls three dice. It's, it depends. Some characters roll a lot of dice for their defensive roll and some uh, don't roll as many. So it's three. Uh, got a lot of blue, which means he's going to uh, throw or retrieve Mjolnir. You'll get to see Mjolnir in action. Um, and he's doing eight damage and inflicting webbed, drawing a card. So this player goes down to 39 and, uh, Mjolnir when it is thrown. So it's, it's on his spot. He's throwing Mjolnir over here. And Mjolnir does one as an isolated source of undefendable damage. He cannot roll defensive dice against Mjolnir. So this player goes down to uh, 38. Uh, we have a close game here, except now he's going to use combo. Some of these you can't use on the same turn that you get them, uh, but you can with combo. And so he's going to use it right away. And he's going to roll these dice again and see what he gets. He got a bunch of blues. We'll say he just does a uh, blue attack and he rolls a couple more times and he's doing punch, which is just four cards and it's an, it's five damage, standard damage. Um, the same thing, he rolls, we'll say it's uh, the three dice and he ends up with two of these again and he gets to retrieve Mjolnir. And when we retrieve Mjolnir, he gets, woo, woo, he gets uh, electrokinesis which if he gets enough of those, he's uh, able to draw an extra here. Let's see. He's able to spend three electrokinesis to draw an extra card. So it's just a way to draw an extra card after a little while, um, which is very nice for Thor. Uh, so he didn't, def he, he got it back, got an electrokinesis and this player has done five damage. So it goes down to 34, and you just proceed like this until uh, someone gets down to zero. The webbed, all that does is um, when this person is attacked with normal damage, the damage becomes undefendable and the token is removed. So um, it wouldn't have done it this turn, but on the next turn when Spider-Man would attack, then uh, Thor wouldn't be able to rule. Uh, the defensive dice is the only thing. Uh, when you, when the game ends, if on the same turn, uh, someone is, uh, if this player had had like, um, eight health and this player had had one health and he did enough damage to knock him out, but he inflicted Thor and did damage at the same time. If both players hit zero or below, then it's a tie. Um, but otherwise, just whoever goes to zero first, the other player, uh, the last person standing is the winner. So that's how to play Dice Throne. The target demographic for this game is I'm calling Gamer Light. It's pretty easy, the basics of the game, but there's enough having to reference the rules and a learning curve that it's nice if you've played enough games that that's not 
uh, an overwhelming process for you. Um, and it also helps if you like battle games. If you like battle games, this is right up your alley. The rule complexity is medium. The first time you play, there's quite the book to pour through. But then after you've played that first game, the basics are the same, regardless of which character you're playing. And so it's very easy to get up and running with just uh, reference, you have to reference every now and then if it's a new power, you need to look it up. Or if there's some uh, player interaction that you're not quite sure how you're supposed to resolve it, you need to reference the rule. So there's occasional references to the rules, but not to the point where I've been playing the game a fair amount that I feel like, oh gosh, here I am going back to the rule book again. It's it's occasional once you've gotten up and running, and especially once you're familiar with the characters. Uh, how competitive is this game? Hi, it is a battle game. If you are playing against somebody who doesn't like the feeling of being attacked and people being out to get them, that is entirely what this game is, and it does it really well. Uh, the replay, replay value is hi. Uh, this is one of my absolute favorite games right now. Uh, my kids know that anytime they say, hey, do you want to play Dice Throne to me? I'll say, yes, yes, let's go play right now. And, and kind of everything else is pushed to the wayside because I'm just so excited to get to play this game on repeat. It's fun to try out new characters and it's still fun to play the same characters again and pair them up against other characters and see how they fare because sometimes uh, the same player's abilities, it's interesting to see how that meshes against some other character and, and what it means when they do battle against each other. Uh, similar games, if you like this one, uh, some of my other favorite games are uh, King of Tokyo, in which you have uh, different monsters that are trying to uh, either pummel the other ones and take away all of their health, or you try to get enough points to win the game. That one I'd say is ideal for three or more players is the thing, playing two player, not as great, but three and up. Great, slightly easier uh, rules than a dice thrown. Um, so if it's, if it's a little bit easier of a group and you have three or more people, that's a great option. And then also Unmatched is entirely uh, deck based. You have cards that you're playing against each other and the characters are not at all balanced. Some are way stronger than others. And so just take that account into account as you play. Uh, but there, the it's it's just so fun. There are a lot of really amazing characters to play as, and they have fantastic miniatures if you're interested in that type of thing. But I just want to thank the OP for sending me uh, the copies of Marvel Dice Throne. I have enjoyed them thoroughly, and I'm excited to check out the other seasons of Dice Throne. They have one and two out currently, and you can take any character and match them up against another character, and I love that. It's been so fun, so you should check it out. Thanks, and see you next time from Game Like a Mother.